how could the administration then, after this, come out and still tie this, as we know they did for days, to a YouTube video? And how could they not claim to know? Why would Ansar al-Sharia, which would have been a prime suspect regardless of whether it had claimed <clears throat> to, uh, responsibility for the attack, they, they claimed responsibility right away? How would they even know about the attack? They know about the attack as the Situation Room, possibly, in the White House is finding out, and we don't want to believe that. We're going to just assume that that's false. How is that possible? To me, this just proves that the, the White House was caught completely off guard by the fact that this was a disaster. And then afterwards, it was immediately when they see this, it's damage control because they didn't do anything. There were no planes coming in. There, they have three air bases nearby. There was no AC-130 Spectre gunship called onto the scene. There were no F-15s buzzing the consulate. Nothing. Can I ask you a question, Buck, for one point of clarification? Because one email address over there you didn't point out. And if we'll look at that email, you'll notice the redacted portion of some of those email addresses. That means the recipient of that of that email is not being told to us. But the suffix of the email on the ones that are redacted says .eop, right? That means Executive Office of the President. Am I wrong? That's what I meant by that's saying the that the, the press, that's the White House. That's the situation. Straight this is to what, the White House This is what Reuters is saying. Straight to the situation. Will, the, the point of this, and you know, this is why we're, we're breaking this out for our viewers to see, it's impossible that this claim was not known across the government. I mean, I think there's even an FBI address in there. I mean, the, you, you know the acronyms, FBI. We all know what that is. I mean, it's very clear that this was widespread information. So it's not that President Obama didn't know this, didn't hear about this. It's not even yeah, that Susan Rice is, didn't hear. And this is my question, because we had operated under, I think, the assumption early on that this was stupidity on the White House's part, that they were, that they were sort of approaching this from their previously uh, arranged perspective on the way these things happen and the various motivations <laughs> of the people involved. Uh, now, now that we know that that wasn't the case, now that we know that they had this kind of warning, what possibly could explain the rationale of the president? And not, you know, forget everyone else, but you know, p people further down the chain. But what could explain the rationale of the president to make the claims that he did, to repeat those claims on national TV well after the fact that he uh, that he knew that they weren't the case? And what's more, isn't that wouldn't this have presented him with an opportunity to convince the American people that he's? to show that he's a tough guy, show that he's a commander-in-chief, and say, we're going to be responding to this, and we're going to be responding you know, to it within the next 24 hours? Couldn't he come out and give a speech like that as opposed to the one that he gave? I would hope that he would have, but clearly he did not. And we've discussed before, look, we've been ahead of the news cycle on this substantially in terms of just how wrong this entire situation, how wrongly, I should say, it's been handled by the administration. We've been saying it from the start because it just smelled fishy. I mean, the fact that they were tying it to the YouTube video, that also came from a completely unclear classified internet posting where somebody from one of these groups said, yeah, it's because of a YouTube video. Well, they're going to say that, but they're not going to say that's, that a group that we know could be responsible, a group of jihadists in eastern Libya, are claiming responsibility. I mean, the only thing I can see this is they're just hoping to stretch it out over multiple news cycles mm -hmm. and try to try to push it away, try to make it sound like it's not as terrible as it is. So I have a couple of questions about this. Well, first of all, has the administration uh, adequately addressed why the rabble-rousers chose 9-11? Was there any significance among jihadists, <laughs> you know, or the Middle East? Why 9-11 of all days they would respond to a YouTube video? Secondly, where was the president as these emails were coming in? Was he meeting with his top advisors? Was he watching the situation unfold, trying to take in information and uh, put it together and put, put together a plan for how our government should be responding to this appropriately? Has our White House uh, explain this at all in any detail? I would assume that they've just figured that they had no ability to secure the facility. That it's, and, Was and the this president is the key point. in the room talking to his Secretary of State, his Secretary of Defense, his national security team, and saying, we're looking at this on the screen with the drone, watching what's happening on the ground. Tell me, what are our options? Uh, we don't know. Yeah. I mean, somebody in the Situation Room or somebody in, in some of these, these places that are literally set up. I mean, when you're talking about operations desks, these are set up specifically to be manned 24 hours a day in the event of something like this happening. That is their reason for existing. So this information was obviously being given out from the embassy in Tripoli very quickly. People had this. What I want to know is why nothing was done. Why they decided that afterwards they weren't going to try to, I mean, I see, help me here. Why were they not trying to secure the facility? They just decided to pull up stakes and we're out of here. Well, I mean, clearly it's a very hostile environment. The, yeah, the timeline that we've been talking about, um, and, and you're right, we've been ahead of this for a while, and we've had seemingly more details than even the White House press spokesperson has had. Um, and the, the timeline that I keep thinking back to is that one of, of uh, negligence, incompetence, and duplicity. And we're seeing that the duplicity part is really starting to come out in full force here. What I've never understood 
is why the president, the State Department, Susan Rice, anyone speaking on this in the days following didn't say, we don't have enough information yet. We are investigating this, and when we know more, we'll, 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 we'll share it with you. Uh, they chose to use false information. They chose to pick and choose that information over other information and propagate a, person. a lie, a fabrication, a story over simply saying, we don't know what happened. I don't know why they didn't do that, because the, 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 the problem is always in the cover-up, right? Mm -hmm. If they had just said, we, we don't know, we are flat-footed on this, we'll get back to you, I don't think you would have heard such a, a dust-up.